Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brenda and today we're going to talk about six things to remember when you're feeling overwhelmed. So let's get real here. That was me just these last few days. I didn't feel like smiling. I didn't feel like having empathy for other people's problems because I felt like I had my own problems to deal with. Didn't want to make dinner. Who really wants to do that anyway? But when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed, you really don't want to make dinner, right? I just didn't want to be responsible for anyone or anything. When I get overwhelmed and stressed, I see all the clutter. I see all the problems. I see all the things that need to be cleaned or fixed or changed in some way. I see all the things I don't like about my life and just have this general dissatisfaction. In the past, I would have blamed my family. I would have blamed my children and their bad behavior for my own bad behavior. I would have complained a lot. I would have said things like, life is hard. Nobody helps me. Can't anybody else see this mess? I have too much to do and not enough time to do it. I would have started a lot of my sentences with I can't or I hate. And I would have eaten a lot of chocolate and a lot of cookies. Then to top it all off, I would have felt guilty because I wasn't being my best self and I was yelling at the people that I love the most. I would go to my room and I would cry and complain to my husband, hoping he would understand and somehow validate the situation. Then I would have come away angry when he didn't meet my expectations. Poor guy. Thankfully, I know better now. I've recognized that when I'm feeling short-tempered and easily annoyed and generally dissatisfied with life, it's not because of my house, my kids, my husband. It's not because of anything outside of me. And focusing on how I wish those things were different will never make me feel better. And isn't that what we really want, to feel better? So here are six things to remember when you're feeling overwhelmed. First, you need to acknowledge that it's not anyone else's job to make you feel better. It's not your mom's job. It's not your husband's job. It's not your kid's job. It's not your bishop's job. It's not your neighbor's job. It's not your co-worker's job. It's not anyone else's job. It's your job. Wouldn't it be nice if everyone around us did exactly what we wanted and exactly the way we wanted? That's never going to happen. And if you're waiting for someone else to make you feel better, you might be waiting, blaming, and complaining for a very long time. And that's not very fun. Just accept the fact that you are responsible to help yourself feel better. And you need to do what it takes. Whosoever perisheth, perisheth unto himself. For behold, ye are free. You're permitted to act for yourself. And God hath given unto you a knowledge, and he hath made you free. Take a time out. Take some deep breaths. Take a bath. Take a walk. Take a nap. Do whatever you need to do, but do it for you. Take this time to refocus on what matters most to you in your life. You need to take this time for you, because no one else will do it for you. The next thing we need to remember is that you are completely normal, and there is nothing wrong with your life the way it is. You are a human, and being human means there will always be opposition in all things. You aren't the only one that has felt the way that you do now. You will always have challenges, and you aren't likely to make positive changes in your life if you're always judging and shaming yourself. I read once that the acronym for shame is should have already mastered everything. As humans, we don't come that way. We have to learn step by step line upon line, here a little and there a little. Anytime you think that you should have been better in some way, or that you should have known, or that you shouldn't have made that mistake, you are judging and shaming yourself. Also, our bodies get tired after a while, and we can't expect ourselves to have endless energy to do everything on our to-do list. So be kind to yourself. See that all these things are done in wisdom and order. For it is not requisite that a man or woman should run faster than he has strength. Okay, the next thing to remember is that you are not alone. Jesus has said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. He has also said, peace I give unto you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He has also said, be of good cheer, and do not fear, for I, the Lord, am with you, and will stand by you. Do you believe in these words from our Savior? Do you trust Him and know that He can give you peace no matter what your circumstances are? I know that the peace of Jesus Christ is available to you now, and you are not alone. 
That brings us to our next thing to remember when you are feeling overwhelmed, and that is you are loved. You are a child of God, and as his child, you will forever and always be loved. President Thomas S. Monson said, Your Heavenly Father loves you, each of you. That love never changes. It is not influenced by your appearance, by your possessions, or by the amount of money you have in your bank account. It is not changed by your talents and abilities. It is simply there. It is there for you when you are sad or happy, discouraged or hopeful. God's love is there for you, whether or not you feel you deserve love. It is simply always there. I know that feeling the love of God in your life changes everything. The circumstances might not change very much at first, but you will change, and that's what makes the difference. The next thing to remember is that all of these things are for your experience, and that is for your good. Sometimes we don't like hearing that because we don't want to think that experiences that seem negative would be for our good. But in the scriptures it says, Therefore, let your hearts be comforted, for all things shall work together for good to them that walk uprightly. All things shall work together for your good. Can you believe that God knows what's happening in your life and that all of these things and challenges that you have will be a blessing to you in some way? If you can trust God knows that this experience is for your good, even if you can't understand it, you will be able to ask yourself things like, what am I learning from this experience? How am I growing? How am I changing? How will this experience help me to bless others? Okay, and the last thing to remember when you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed is that you can do this. Jesus said, he who is faithful shall overcome all things. I know it's hard to have faith when you're right in the middle of a challenge because right then things feel hopeless. So we have to change our thinking to bring us back to faith. We have to bring us ourselves back to hope. You can do this. You are meant to do this. This is your work. And you can be successful. You can overcome all things through faith in Jesus Christ. In Philippians 4.13 it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And in another scripture in Alma it says, I know that I am nothing. As to my strength, I am weak. Therefore, I do not boast of myself, but I will boast of my God. For in his strength, I can do all things. And so can you. In the strength of Jesus Christ, you can do whatever it is that you are called upon to do. When it feels challenging, you must remember that you can rely upon the strength of Jesus Christ and you will be able to accomplish the things that matter most. Okay, so those are the six things to remember when you are feeling overwhelmed and stressed. Remember that you are responsible to help yourself feel better. You are a human, and it's normal to feel this way. You are not alone. You are loved. All of these experiences will be for your good, and you can do this. I hope these reminders have been helpful to you. And wherever you are, you're doing great. You're doing just fine. The goal is just to get a little better each day, brighter and brighter. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.